When you drive through America's Dairyland, you probably enjoy seeing the red barns, the cows in their pastures, the Wisconsin dairy scenes that seem timeless. And yet, alongside these scenes are signs of new growth and new advances, remarkable technological advances, advances that contribute to healthier cows, healthier land, and healthier local communities. Let's look at how technology is changing today's dairy farms, starting with better cow care. John Pagel is a dairy farmer outside Kewanee, Wisconsin. This small circle device is called the RFID tag. The tag is a radio frequency identification transmitter. This tag is used that we put in the ear tag of all our animals. We put them in at the age of about two weeks of age. It keeps track of her age, what she eats, how much milk she gives when she becomes a cow, how fast she gives it, where she is, treatments, vaccines, anything that has to do with that animal gets kept track of on this tag and the information gets transferred back to the mainframe computer at the farm. The main computer here has all the information. We download that into our handheld computer and we can go in the barns and scan the cows and see what kind of attention that the cow needs for that day. It comes down to cow care. A cow is a voluntary animal. The better you take care of her, the better she's gonna take care of you. Milking time used to look like this on every Wisconsin dairy farm. But today, technology is making milking time easier for cows and people on farms of all sizes. Jamie Witzpalek is John's daughter and one of four Pagel children and two spouses involved with the family farm. This is our 72 stall rotary parlor. We milk approximately 3,500 cows in this parlor. It takes about four minutes for the cows to be milked and about eight minutes for the cows to go all the way around. When they enter the rotary parlor, they are standing on a rubber mat for cow comfort. And when you see the cows, you can see them chewing their cud. It's almost like a kid going on the carousel. They're very happy cows all the way around. There are other types of milking parlors that are popular in Wisconsin. Andrea Brossard Martin farms with her brother and family outside Beaver Dam. Parlors today offer a lot more advantages for cows and people alike. Our parlor is a parallel parlor. The big advantage for the cows is that they have the opportunity to come up, get milk, and then return to wherever they were being housed, whether it be in free stall or in pasture. They can then eat and drink water and then also lay down if they want to. It's also better for the milkers because we have the opportunity to just be right level with the cows. We're not bending down or, or carrying a lot more equipment. It used to be that dairy farmers only had themselves to rely on to do everything. All the field work, all the cutting and harvesting, everything. But today's technologies allow for more specialization, which means better forage for cows and the best land stewardship. Marty Faldit is a dairy nutrition consultant with a PhD in animal nutrition. I work with 15 farms. Uh, they range from uh, 200 cow uh, milking facilities up to uh, 4,000. A diet is established for each cow depending on where she is in her life cycle where she is in her lactation curve, if she's pregnant, and how close to delivery she is. So we use the uh, a software that's uh, a modeling program to help us predict how the cow is utilizing and absorbing nutrients. A Wisconsin cow's diet usually consists of corn silage, grain, hay, and supplements. Forages vary from different cuttings to different uh, fields. We take uh, forage analysis. Uh, they're sent into labs that analyze the feed for uh, nutrients that then we plug into the modeling program. So once we have the diet set up through the program, we enter it into the computer at the farm, and at the farm that information is transferred to uh, the feeder who then can read the recipe. The various feeds in the recipe are mixed together, so each cow gets a complete balanced diet, and the milk she gives is of the highest quality. A TMR is a total mixed ration, and it's the individual ingredients mixed together. Yeah, we do monitor rations, and, and one way to do that is to take samples of the TMR. The fields where a cow's food is grown are managed just as precisely to protect the land, very often by another type of specialist. Todd Koss is a crop consultant. I work with mostly dairy farmers. I have a few crop uh, cash croppers, but uh, mostly my dairy farms range from 50 cows to 4,500 cow operations. So there's a lot of diversity there. 
I work with three programs. One is a cropping program, one is a nutrient management program, and one is a mapping program. Part of my job in, in writing the nutrient management plan on this farm is, is to map the fields. The fields are, have different slopes, obviously. They're not flat like a tabletop. This is important in writing the nutrient management plan. So we have to put the necessary crops in here so that, that we take good uh, care of our soil and the soil is not uh, getting into the water system. Taking samples of soil is a large part of Todd Koss's job. Every four years, Todd takes one sample for every five acres. They go into the lab and then they come back over my computer as an email. Then I'll pull them in from here and uh, they'll be added to the field that I'm working on. Once the plan is complete, I sit down with the operations manager and we go through it line by line so that he understands what's going on. He lines up my information with the information for the custom operator to get our fields planted. And how does a farmer make use of such precise information? More and more, it's through a global positioning system called Precision Agriculture. We use a tremendous amount of GPS satellite technology in our agronomy business. Uh, we use the same sa satellite technology that you would use in your car with your TomTom -tom or your Garmin. What ours does is we use a correction signal that corrects it down even much tighter than what you run in your vehicle. Your vehicle will get you to the grocery store parking lot. Ours is tight enough where it'll take you back to the same place in the field, plus or minus three to six inches, where yours may be off 150 foot in a day when your car. It also allows our equipment to auto steer their way back and forth across the field where instead of the operator having to look off the end of his boom and follow old technology, a drop of foam, the machine now drives itself back and forth across the field, plus or minus three to six inches. We service a broad spectrum of farms. We've got growers that are dairy that might have 200 acres of strips. And then we eventually work up to growers that are as large as almost 10,000 acres now that all they do is grain. We're getting to the point where instead of trying to farm by the field, we're trying to farm by the foot. The idea behind that is through the use of the GPS satellite system and our correction signal along with, with our computer programs, we can get down where we can zero right in and put the nutrients where they're needed and don't waste them where they're not. And environmentally, it's the right thing to do. And also for the grower from a return on investment, it's the right thing to do. One of the fertilizers that dairy farmers and field nutritionists count on is a naturally occurring one called manure. But today, manure is used for a lot more than fertilizer, thanks to a bioenergy system called an anaerobic digester. An anaerobic digester is more of a process of taking manure in an airless environment and turning that by heating it into methane gas, and, and methane gas then is, is pumped uh, to an engine that runs strictly on methane, and that engine turns a generator, and with the generator, we make electricity. We produce enough electricity to supply about 310 houses on a year-round, 24-7 basis. We separate that uh, manure coming out, and the solids part of it that's what we use to bed our cows. The product is light and fluffy. It's kind of feather-like, and it's uh, sterile, and it's clean. Uh, in the wintertime, it's warm, and, and it's like giving the cows that warm bed that uh, we're all looking for on that cold night. Wisconsin leads the nation in the number of biodigesters on farms, and many more are on the way. Finally, there is one technology that is transforming dairy farming. Randy Hallett milks 54 cows outside Casco, Wisconsin. One of the most important things in today's uh, agriculture is smartphone. Uh, we use it for texting, emailing, we use it for communicating to our neighbors who help us, most of us, network our machinery together, communicating with manufacturers, communicating with the vet. We use it for uh, communicating with some of the neighbors that we do custom work with, a lot of our manure hauling, and when we're planting, this has all been planted with satellite GPS. They want to know when you're ready, within 15 minutes, it's a very important thing for all of us. Wisconsin dairy producers are on the leading edge of change in the dairy industry, always looking for new and better ways to deliver a product that is even safer and better for you, and making sure cows are better cared for than ever before. It's one reason why every Wisconsin dairy cow contributes $20,000 a year in economic activity to our state, and the dairy industry contributes over $26 billion annually. 
So, enjoy your next drive through the Wisconsin countryside. And know that the dairy farms you pass are changing to make your trip and your way of life better than ever. <laughs>